topic of our discussion is phylum platyhelminthes in this phylum we will discuss definition of phylum platyhelminthes examples of platyhelminthes general characteristics of platyhelminthes classification and last one importance of platyhelminthes first of all we will discuss what is platyhelminthes the platyhelminthes are the an ancient phylum but practically nothing is known for their evolutionary history because they have very soft bodies which do not pre preserve well as fossils scientists believe that the first tubercularians evolved around 550 million years ago platyhelminthes are mostly worm like creature that are dorsoventrally flattened meaning they look like a ribbon this is why they are called names such as tapeworms flatworms flukes and planarians and you can see some examples and their images here examples of radial month is planaria liver fluke tapeworm and these are examples now we will discuss what are the general characteristics of this phylum number 1 is they have flattened body on both sides so they are called flatworms they have bilateral symmetrical body second one is they may be free living for example planaria some are parasites and live in body of an other animal like liver fluke third one is they have soft body without skeleton they are triploblastic animal that is their body consist of three layers outer ectoderm middle mesoderm and inner is endoderm next one is a true body cavity coelom is not found so they are acelomate animals without coelom they have a single gastrovascular cavity in some animals this cavity is branched and opens to the outer by mouth only for example planaria some animals do not have gastrovascular cavity such as histoda that is tapeworms the movement take place by cilia and by contractions and expansions of the muscles like an earthworm and you can see here its inner structures next blood vascular system is not present the transportation take place mostly by diffusion a respiration also take place by diffusion through the external body surface the nervous system consists of brain ganglia and pair of connected nerve cords they also have eye spots they are hermaphrodite animal that is male and female reproductive organs are present in the same body that is in same animal and you can see here the parasitic animals are either ectoparasites or endoparasites they have suckers which are used to attach them to the host body and such food materials some parasitic animals complete their life cycle in the body of one host they are called monogenic some animals complete their life cycle in body of two host and they are called digenic now we will discuss classification of phylum platyhelminthes in this phylum three major classes are present number 1 is class terbilaria example planaria class termitoda example liver fluke class histoda example tapeworm and these are its scientific names and here are some examples you can see here now we will discuss its classes one by one the first class is terbilaria and uh, here are some features first one is mostly free living forms found in fresh or sea waters or on land second one body is unsegmented and is dorsoventrally flattened epidermis is cellular or synthetical intestine is either absent or simple and sac like and you can see here examples of class terbilaria second class is termitoda this class includes a group of parasites that infect various animals including man body is specialized for parasitic mode of life its examples are liver fluke blood fluke and you can see example of this class here the third class is class histoda this class includes tapeworms which are in intestinal parasites or vertebrates its examples are tenia solium tenia sagittina like beef tapeworm and here are examples 
Now we will discuss what is the importance of this phylum. Although some platyal monkeys are free living and non-destructive, many other species, particularly the liver fluke and tapeworm, parasitize humans, domestic animals or both. In Europe, Australia, North and South America, tapeworm infestations of humans have been greatly reduced as consequence of protein, but where sanitation is poor and meat eaten undercooked, the incidence of tapeworm infestations is high. In the in many countries, much of the population is infected with the broad tapeworm. In parts of the southern United States, a small portion of population may be infested with this. And Europe and in United States, the beef tapeworm is common because of the habit of eating undercooked steaks or under other beef products. 36 or more fluke species have been reported as parasitic in human endemic centuries of infestation occur in virtually all countries but widespread infections occur in far east africa and tropical america many species are ingested by cysts called metastasians in undercooked food and uh, flukes here these are examples of this phylum who are parasites free swimming larvae of blood flukes penetrate in human skin directly in humans these parasites and other listed below cause much misery and death control of certain flukes through the cardiation of their mollusks host have been attempted but without much success you can see here entry of this phylum is caused by three species of genus Kistosoma known collectively as blood flukes. Africa and Western Asia, for example, Iran, Iraq are endemic centers for this, as well as in the West Indies and Southern America. In the Far East, the important blood fluke among domestic animals, the sheep, liver fluke, may cause deliberating and fatal epidemics in sheep. These animals become infected by eating on grasses. Monogenia are common pests on fish in many parts of the world.